Hello, welcome back for another one of these videos on common interview mistakes. And today we're going to talk about uh, our reluctance and sometimes ignoring our responsibility to keep fear uh, in the interview room prevalent in our minds. Uh, we want to take into account the fear that is present and understand it as much as possible. And when we talk about that issue of fear, first one thing we need to uh, be concerned with is uh, the fear that we have within ourselves. Uh, do we have a fear of that interview scenario that's causing us to be less effective than we possibly could be? We need to look at those things that make us insecure in the interview room, those things that take, a, take us all, off of our game. Because remember, the number one people the reason people tell us the truth is because of the credibility and comp competence of the interviewer. So if we have those fears present that would negatively affect that credibility and competence, that's going to be perceived by the individual that we're talking to, and therefore they're going to be less likely to share the truthful information that we're there to get. So we need to get a handle on that, whether that requires, uh, that, that means we need to uh, talk to some coworkers, take different co-interviewers in with us, get some additional training, you know, round up those areas where we feel weakness, uh, get comfortable and conf confident so that we have the ability to succeed in the interview room. Uh, it, it's so important. Once we take care of that, then back to uh, week number two, I think, on the issue of planning. When we're planning for this interview, are we planning for the fears that are present? What's causing the individual we talk to to feel the fear that they are? And, and when I bring that up, if you're thinking only suspect interviewer, the wrongdoer, or the individual that's going to lie to us, I'm not. I'm talking about victims. I'm talking about witnesses. I'm talking about anybody that we sit down with. What could be the fears that are present? Because those fears become major roadblocks to get to the truth of the matter, to get to the base of the matter as we do this interview. So we, we have to identify those. And we can identify those to a great extent in those steps up front when we're doing planning and preparation for the interview. We want to understand what's going on. We under, want to understand where that person is coming from. Remember, our own frame of reference, our own understanding of the world is basically irrelevant at this point. We want to put ourselves in the position of the person we're talking to and try to identify what they would be feeling at that time that would create fears within them that would be roadblocks to telling the truth. So we, we know there's fear present and there's lots of reasons for it. You know, the number one reason for that fear to be present is fearful of the consequences for the actions they took and accepting responsibility for that. Now that fear generates itself in many different ways, right? Uh, you know, what's going to happen to me? Uh, it, who's going to know that this happened? How do I get beyond this? I'm not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Those things all interfere with the ability to get to uh, truthfulness in the uh, situation. Uh, so what we know is that fear has to be overcome somehow to obtain an admission, to obtain truthful information. And we have to do that. We have to accomplish that. We have to recognize it. We have to draw them out of that. Uh, as an interviewer, if you can keep that issue of fear at the forefront, paramount in your mind, everything else in your theme presentations should flow from it. Because that theme presentation is to uh, make the individual realize you're not judging at all, you're giving them the opportunity to tell the truth so that you can move beyond this issue so you, you can get to the light at the end of the tunnel and that you can uh, move uh, past where we currently are. So very important to do that. Very important to recognize the need to do that. So let me uh, just talk about a couple of things here uh, that would be useful in moving ahead. So in being cognizant of that fear, we want to be aware of what our fears are and their effect on the interview process. We need to resolve those anyhow. We need to deal with those anyhow, uh, whatever they might be. I think I spent an awful lot of time in my career not even taking into account what those were. And I'm not sure how those translated to the person that we're talking to. You know, how do we appear physically? How do we appear 
uh, uh, confidently and competently in the interview room? How are we asking questions? Are we asking questions that would uh, build that or detract from that? So we want to be aware of those. Secondly, we want to plan and strategize to identify the interviewee's fears and how to resolve them. Now, the planning is going to take place beforehand. We're going to have some theories and thoughts as to those fears before we go in the interview room. As we launch into that interview and we conduct rapport to establish relationship, as we uh, accomplish general basic questioning to understand where this person is at, some of those uh, perceived fears that we had will come more into focus. And this is the strategizing concept of what am I learning during this interview that alters or changes my view of those fears so that I can better address them as we move to uh, uh, themes and, and talking about how to resolve this issue. So we want to do that. We want to understand how psychological first aid can be used to mitigate fears. Psychological first aid uh, uh, applies to victims and victims don't have to be just victims. I've had uh, individuals that needed psychological first aid that were witnesses and subjects uh, in, in cases because they perceive themselves as victims. And oftentimes victimology is associated with the issue of fears. So where are we at in that process when you're talking about the, uh, the stages of uh, reorganization, uh, impact, recoil, reorganization after a, a, a victimology type event? Where are we at in that process? What are these fears? How do I apply psychological first aid to help them move beyond that fear and resolve the issue? Don't be afraid to ask questions you know, what is it that is the greatest concern to you in this interview? You know, what is it about this issue that is causing you the greatest anxiety? Uh, what do you see as a way to resolve this issue and move down the road? Because in the context of those open-ended questions, a lot of time, the fears associated them will also come out. So some good things to do there uh, in order to better understand the issue of fear. Uh, I've focused on this issue more. I want to show you this at the beginning. I've been recently reading this book, The Gift of Fear. Uh, it's by uh, Gavin De Becker. It's out there. It's uh, sold uh, a lot of copies. And it really uh, it caused me to think a little bit more about this uh, concept of fear and how it affects so many areas of life. It's not, not just our work world. Uh, it's how it affects us as individuals, how it affects our family and friends and those around us. And I believe uh, better understanding that gives us the better ability to communicate and be successful in the communication with others. So I would encourage you to look at that. Uh, examine it in your own life and in the uh, life of those people you interview. Look how you might apply some of this stuff in order to get to the root of the issue and be able to address those individuals' needs in order to fill your needs, the convergence of needs, uh, and get the information that you're in the interview for. Uh, thank you for your, uh, your time here today. Uh, go out there, do some good interviews, and be safe. Take care.